Hi, my name is Amy Willis, and I had a near-death experience. In January, I went to the hospital, and long story short, I ended up with sepsis, having emergency surgery, and went into severe sepsis and septic shock, and my body started shutting down my organs. I went to cardiac arrest and acute respiratory failure, and my liver and kidneys were shutting down, and then my body actually was shutting down. My fever was uh, almost 106 degrees, so I was uh, done. And when I came out of the emergency surgery, they put me into a coma and put me on a ventilator. But when one of the times that I died, I immediately was caught up into heaven. And when I got there, Jesus was there. But I'm going to back up and tell you before this happened, I have a very close personal relationship with Jesus. So I have strongly believed to be outside of the body is to be present with Jesus. So I was immediately there. But one of the first things I remember is the way that him and I were talking to each other. It was different, you know, the way my mouth is moving now and the way we speak and communicate. It's not like that there. It is, I guess, what I would want to call a knowing. Like, he knew what I was thinking, feeling, saying, and I could feel that on him, too. And we were communicating but it kind of felt confusing to me. I was like, huh. And I immediately noticed I felt so light. And I suffer from a lot of arthritis pain. So when you feel certain things every day that you kind of suffer through, and then that's totally gone because your consciousness is still there. Like you're still you. So you're kind of, you know, like I'm in a new place and, and kind of checking things out. And then my heart, like where you would, we would feel our heart felt so connected with Jesus. And I kept feeling like he was happy I was there. You feel totally accepted for who you are. And like, he's happy you're there. Like the story of the prodigal son, when the father runs out to greet the son coming home, but the son was like kind of nervous and, you know, that he had upset his father. But in the story, no, the father ran out and embraced him and greeted him with a kiss. It was like that. That felt so beautiful that I have yet to be able to really put that into words because that love and acceptance, it's um, out of this world. <laughs> I guess that's exactly what it was. And I also had noticed, like, you step out of time. Like, it's stepping out of something, and it's like that stuff is behind you, but you don't look back and you don't want to. Like, I was happy to be there and step out of our world and time and to go into this one. But it was like I was home, and I didn't look back. I wasn't sad that I left. That love and acceptance that totally grabbed onto me, it was... I, I wanted more and I, I wanted to be there and I was very happy to be there. And it just kept like pouring out between us and the excitement and love I felt for Jesus when I was there. It was like my spirit was just kind of wrapping around his, but like when you see him, he was a big, like bright light and just really shining, but you know, it's him. And then I just remember this peace that was there. You hear sound in the background and you hear everything. Your heart is praising him and everything around you is praising him too. The angels in the background are praising him, but it's like you hear this beautiful sound that you've never heard here on earth and everything is a part of everything it's like everything connects to jesus everything is so beautiful like the colors i wouldn't even begin to know how to describe them because we don't have colors here that i could label but like our colors are up there but it, they're like magnified like in heaven it's like that intensified because like the way the colors illuminate and glow it's intensified times a million it's just beautiful 
I mean, you see like the trees and grass and there's two trees there and then a river like flowing through, but you can hear the sound of the river and it's almost like the river communicates with you and the trees communicate with you. All kinds of animals like our pets and horses and like everything, they're there, but they speak to you too. And I'm looking at everything just like, what you know, this is so amazing. It's something that I miss every day while I'm here on earth. I feel the love. I feel connected to Jesus, but to be in his presence was amazing. And another thing to note there, there is not any foul smell there. Like everything has a flowery scent, but really mild. Like if you're allergic and you know, it's hard and it just doesn't aggravate your sinuses or your lungs like in any way. And there's no negativity. There's nothing negative. It's so positive. So I'm checking out everything and then I'm talking to him. I'm kind of just asking questions because I didn't care about what happened to me. I didn't care about anything back on earth. I wanted to express, you know, the love you feel for the people, but it's like that was gone and I was home. And as I'm communicating with him and talking about things, he tells me to look to my right. So I look to my right and I see, it's not stars, but it's like little balls of light just all over the place. They're like golden and shiny, like again, like a shades of gold and it was beautiful, just little balls of light. But one of them started coming towards me and when I saw the one coming towards me, without seeing her, I felt my mother's presence. My biological mother died when I was 10. Severe sepsis killed her and she went to septic shock and died. And that's what was trying to take me out as well in the hospital. So I am having that knowing and I got super excited, like, that's my mother. But again, I couldn't see her. I just saw the little ball of light coming towards me, but I knew it's like our spirits knew each other. And then when I got excited, she started coming faster. And then she appeared to me as like how I would have remembered her. She looked really young, like in her 20s. She died when she was 30. So she was like young and beautiful. My mother was a beautiful woman, but she had what we call Shekinah. That's the glory of God. And she had that like all over. It's like she was in her new glorious body. And I don't know if Jesus let her appear to me looking like that. Cause I, you know, I saw the face and I'm like, that is my mom. <laughs> wow. You know, I was just, I was overwhelmed with gratitude and love because losing her when I was 10, it hurt really, really bad. And when we started communicating, it was again, that knowing, like we were knowing what each other were saying without having to say it. It's like your spirit just, you can feel what the other spirit is feeling. Like you're communicating this not with words. It's, it's just going back and forth just with feeling, with your words almost being expressed but with energy. And I could feel Jesus watching us uh, like a loving father. Like he was really happy to give me that gift. And he was really happy at the reaction of us seeing each other. And she was at such peace as well. She, and she was so happy. My heart was just just swelling with this love, gratitude, happiness. Like those are the words I can only think of to put it. It was, it was intensely much more. And Jesus told me this time I heard in an audible voice, Amy, your mother is going to be really happy to see you when you come home, but it's just not your time yet. And I immediately was like, no, no, I didn't want to leave. So when it was time for me to go, he said he needed to show me some things first. So when he was talking to me, he just kept enforcing the importance of people knowing that what he wants is a personal relationship with everyone. He wants you to come as you are to him and just be yourself because the way that it is there, like he sees into you. He knows everything you're thinking and feeling, even the most private inner thoughts. But I didn't feel any shame. I didn't feel anything. And a lot of people say that you're 
life like flashes before you and see all these things from your I didn't see anything because the Bible says and I personally believe that when you accept Jesus as your personal savior that all is forgiven he said he forgets your sins as far as the east is from the west and they're buried in the depths of the sea and it was that nothing was brought in I've done a lot of things that he could have brought up a lot and he did not bring up one thing that I've ever done. It was when I got there, it was love and acceptance. That's it. Love, peace, and acceptance. And he kept telling me over, that is very important to him. He kept emphasizing the importance of how he wants a relationship with everyone, that he died for everyone, and that he loves everyone. And then he started to show me how, uh, how I said earlier, everything has a sound, how every, you know, the sound travels through everything and, and we're all spiritually connected to him. Then he was showing me earth and how that goes down from him to earth, you know, and communicating with us, that he's constantly pursuing us and he's constantly pursuing a relationship with everybody. I don't care who you are, it's everybody. Then he showed me the spirit of what's called Antichrist, but it's just Antichrist is just anything that goes against what Jesus wants. And he wasn't like pretty golden and stuff like, you know, the people in heaven but he had like a glow to him, like he was a spiritual being, but he was evil and he had a, a smug look on his face and he sits, he was showing me sitting like this with that look on his face and he kept you know, going like that. And he would open his mouth and it would be like musical notes almost, like he had maybe smoked a cigarette and started blowing the smoke out, but it was in long, like if you were unrolling a scroll type that was coming out of his mouth and that also was going down to earth. And as it would go down, it started to look like a sidewalk that was going down there. And he would show me like evil spirits starting to walk down to earth. And he immediately took me down into locations in earth and he was showing me like i would be there and he would show me like an area that had a lot of people that love him and then all of a sudden a church would pop up and it was different types of churches like um, protestant based church catholic jehovah witness you know with kingdom hall and then the mormons with their temple he was showing me the ones that would pop up and then I would feel extreme sadness, like his heart was breaking. And it was, I could only take it for a little bit because it was so hard to take. And, and I was like, what's going on? You know, and he showed me, this is what he's doing. There's churches that is helping pop up everywhere. And these churches convince people that they have to work to get to heaven, that there's things that they have to do, that they have to get right first before they can come to me. It's what we refer to as a work based religion because it's his religion and, and then he was showing me that that is so much going on in the earth right now and it, it's literally breaking his heart because it's not the truth the truth is there's nothing we can do to earn salvation Jesus died for us and, and then that's just it because we all do things you know we're not supposed to do and the way that sin entered the world you know he knows that and he knows that there's no one that can get to heaven without him. And that's why he died. He, but he did it for everyone. And he wants everyone to know that. He wants everyone to know he loves them and he wants a personal relationship with them. That's what he just kept really emphasizing to me. So after he was showing me all that, you know, he was like, you know, it's, it's time for me to go back. And he showed me this later in a dream as well. But uh, I got to relive that and, uh, you know, a lot of other things. But whenever I was leaving, it's like he showed me the nurses and the doctors working on me. And then I was with him and it's like I got to have a last dance with him. And this time, instead of the bright, beautiful light, he came and he looked like, you know, more of a man and made him like he had the glorious body like my mom, like he appeared to me like that. And he looked a lot like the Jesus and the Chosen. But I, we were immediately in this huge place that looked like a city of gold. Everything was made out of gold, like the streets. The, there was like almost like a big castle-like 
place in the background and he was holding me and dancing with me and we were face to face and as we were dancing this time I was talking and he was talking and and we were talking to each other and he told me okay Amy it's time to go back and I kept begging to please stay I I didn't want to come home I didn't want to go back and he was just kept telling me it's not your time yet you know you'll come home one day but it's not your time yet and as I was leaving, I felt myself descending and he leaned down and got directly in my face and I felt his breath on his face and he said, remember this. And he said, epata eptata. And he said, and I was like, huh? he said, remember this, epata eptata. And as I kept going back again, then I heard a distance and he said, Amy, remember epata eptata. And after a long time of research and like hours of prayer, that means amazing beginnings. So I was sent back. And when I woke up in the hospital, my adoptive mom was there. This was my mom that adopted me after my biological mother died and my husband. And I told them, like, did I die? And because she's like, yes, yes, you did. I said, I knew I did. I went to heaven. And then for as much as I could talk, you know, to tell her about that, this was after I was on a ventilator for eight days. I'm in ICU for three weeks. And it was just a really, really amazing experience. But the most important thing that he just kept emphasizing is he wants a personal relationship with everyone and tell them I love them, tell them I want a person, you know, and, and to, to show me, to show them that I guess that people that are saying things that are of him, that's not truly him. And it, it's, it's really important, you know, to read the Bible and read that for yourself because that is in there. I'm not making this up. Like everything I'm saying is in the Bible. It's there. It's just that people take it and actually twist what's really there because it's really a love letter to man that Jesus wants a personal relationship with all of us and he loves us and he wants us all to come home to live with him for eternity.